Hello and welcome to History Talk. Hello and welcome back to History Talk. Today we're going to be talking about, well, some of the um, views that, uh, well, you know, Irish people and Unionist people would have held uh, about self government. So, on the Unionist side, you had the Unionists. Now, the Unionists were people who believed that Ireland was, well, better off uh, to be in the United Kingdom, and some of them actually thought it was good. I mean, obviously, there's two sides to a coin, you know. I mean, I could say, oh, well, it's better to eat the banana than the apple, but I don't I might necessarily say I want to have either. But, you know, so there's a sort of thing where it's like, okay, so it's, it's, it's some people think, it's, oh, it's just better than ha to have be, you know, to be on, on your own, and others think it's actually downright good, which, you know, we can kind of do our opinion, I guess. Um, anyway, so they wanted to keep the United Short Kingdom, well, they wanted, they wanted to keep the Union with Ireland and England. There were three main reasons why a person might be a Unionist. Ethnic identity, religion, and economic consideration. First of all, many Unionists were actually descended from uh, Scottish people, and then later on, British people. Well, English people who had settled in Ireland in the 16th and 17th centuries because originally what had happened was England had planted the many Scots into Northern Ireland. Uh, obviously other areas had uh, failed to be so successful but the, these were the plantations and they were rarely successful and basically this is what happens. Uh, many you know, sir send from these people. Some are, you know, further on, you know, further down the line. They came to Ireland just because, you know, Ireland was a dominion and it was controlled by England. And then you have religion. Most Irish Protestants were Unionists. They felt very comfortable in the United Kingdom because it was a Protestant state. Uh, in Britain, the vast majority of people were actually Protestants and the King and Queen had to be Protestant at Protestant churches churches enjoys a privileged position. Of course, uh, you know, don't give a single church power really is a, is a main issue. You don't want to be like, oh yes, this church is allowed to have this power. But the other church, no, that's the issue. You don't want that to happen because, you know, that, that was a problem. Now, however, in Ireland, they had the same sort of issue, which was that Catholics were, well, big. And there was a problem. So while it was all, you know, it, it, either side is good. It's not all good to have all most Catholics. Not all, it's not, but it's not good in Britain that they have all Protestants. So because Ireland is mostly Catholic and Roman Catholic, I should say, if Ireland is to break away from the other kingdom, they will have their own parliament, and Protestants will suddenly be heavily outnumbered by Catholics. Because you know, right now, sure, you know, you've got England, and England is, is you know, pretty powerful. So around this time, you've got around three million, uh, around three million and a quarter uh, who are Roman Catholics. And then Protestants, you've only got around a million. So you've got a pretty small amount there. What's interesting though is that in Ulster, you've got only 690,000 uh, Catholics and 890,000 Protestants. So in Ulster they have a majority. Uh, however, in the three southern provinces, which is the area that um, is now the Republic of Ireland, you've got two and a half million Catholics to just one quarter of a million Protestants. Now, this means that many of the Irish Protestants really want to stay within the United Kingdom. They felt relatively safe there, whereas in, 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 whereas in an independent Ireland, they fear they might suffer discrimination in jobs and even religious, religious persecution. Of course, uh, from our previous episodes, you might notice that uh, that is exactly what happens to Catholics in Northern Ireland. So, you know, slightly hypocritical that, you know, you, you, you know, when Catholics are under your power that you do the exact same thing to them that you feared that would happen to you. I mean, you know, like, it made me be the bigger person and uh, not be offensive. Anyway, getting back to the history of it, Protestants, while they were mostly Unionists, there were exceptions. For example, the uh, founders of the Home Rule Party, Isaac Butt and Charles Stuart Parnell, 
or Protestants. The main point with this was that if you were a Protestant, you actually had a little bit more of a sort of a, well, you know, a standing. You were more likely to, well, be supported and all these sort of things. And you were less likely to be, you know, drowned trodden. It was also more likely that you were upper class or, you know, middle class. So it meant that, you know, because there was less discrimination against Protestants, it meant that if you're Protestant, well, you had access to a lot of education and you might be able to, well, you know, educate yourself about these things and maybe, you know, even just want to understand that, you know, state where, of course, also there's the little aspect of if you are in government, uh, you can't form a discriminatory state against yourself if you're the person making the discriminatory, if you're making, if you're making the state. Uh, however, of course, that becomes a problem later down the line when you've got uh, discriminatory people in power. Which is always a stupid thing to do, because uh, what it was a problem for is that your country begins to, well, become a bit of a discriminatory place. And when a country comes to a discriminatory place uh, after a war of independence, then it looks like, well, well, maybe war shouldn't have happened because it just looks like you're discriminating against your own people now. Anyway, so you also have an economic decision uh, to make, which is most runners of big Irish businesses um, were unionists. Uh, it's actually interesting because uh, the, uni the Guinness family, uh, which are the main kind of Irish thing uh, that people see, uh, weren't actually, you know, they were unionists. Uh, so technically, in a way, they weren't really uh, Irish in a sense. But they were, you know, from the con country of Ireland, but just not supportive of a free Ireland, which is of interest there. Um, you know, just uh, Guinness World Records, you know. Yeah. So they sold most of the projects to Britain and its empire. They feared that if the Irish had, if the Irish had independence, this would interfere with that trade. In the east of Ulster, the economy had absolutely exploded in comparison with the rest of Ireland because the rest of Ireland began to decline economically. You know, Protestants who were in a majority in this area uh, had done very well, and a lot of them had good jobs in linen and shipbuilding. They feared that an Irish parliament dominated by farmers would impose barriers on trade with Britain and damage the property. Because at this time, Britain had basically been using Ireland as essentially it's field it's a massive area where you would grow crops and obviously the one problem with this was that um well if you own a bunch of land and the people have no rights because you control the rights then you kind of don't really educate them that way that well and if you're using people as fields you don't really have any sort of an area so economicness on an economic side it's just sort of like no we're not gonna help you prosper we're gonna take the food you make and we're gonna sell it to our own people so you know that's the issue but if it's if it's a, if you need to invest money if you need to pay people to make machinery then suddenly that's different because machinery isn't just oh you work the land we take the food machinery is like well you have to build the machinery. That costs money to build it. It isn't just, oh, work on it. It isn't just labour. You have to have all the materials involved and all sorts of things. And that means you have to have this sort of economic development. Now, Ulster divisions are basically like this. They're divided into Southern Unionists and Ulster Unionists. While both groups are actually united in their determination to keep Ireland in their kingdom, their circumstances are very different. Now, the thing is, if you look at it like this, if you're a Southern Unionist, you are not really in a majority, you know. Your case is going to be a very small minority. Now, you should listen to minorities, you know, they do matter, but the problem is, they're not going to be listened to. And if you try and listen to them, and if the, if the Ulster Unionists try to put them in there, then they might even damage their own case. So later on, this becomes a problem because all students think, well, we have a clear majority. You know, we were able to say to the English government, no, look, we have a majority here. In Ulster, we firmly have a majority, you know, by a couple of hundred thousand. So, you know, 
what we're going to do with that. But food and sales, well, that's a hard bargain to make. That becomes a problem that we will be discussing in the next video. Please do join us then and please do subscribe to the channel. That helps as does viewing other videos. All of these things help and all of these things are free. I mean, you probably know that. YouTubers always say that sort of thing. It's free to subscribe. Yes, it's free to subscribe, but like, you know, do you want to? I mean, it's more long than it's helpful. You could help people out without actually paying over any money. You know? There you go. Have some luck today. And you know, you never know. Anyway, uh, please do come back. Um, if not, and you don't see other videos, bye bye forever then, I guess. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy your um, rest of your existence. Bye.